bunch to be windy out there today. But, so about 25 to 45 kilometers per hour, but not a problem. I've got my uh, hammock that's uh, double wrapped in my German bag. And that's inside a tarp uh, envelope, just to keep the wind off. But you can hear it around the outside. Kind of awesome, actually. Yeah. So, good morning. Very windy night, but not any kind of problem. Um, even in a hammock on actually pretty steep ground, if you know what to do. So, what do we do this time? Well, we have my uh, tarp here that was attached as a sort of a, a wide windbreak. Underneath, we have my Durban bag rolled around to provide warmth for my hammock and inside the hammock as usual mountain serap it's not uh, really a sleeping bag it's really just a poncho but it's uh, a sort of a three-quarter sleeping bag, poncho, winter coat thing with the Prima Loft. The German bag has got some uh, thermal insulation as well, but mainly it was just the wind last night. Very strong, so important. Looking above to see that there aren't any widow makers when you put the camp up. And of course, being aware of uh, stumbling around in the middle of the night. So that was really a uh, very comfy sleep. And uh, yeah, that driven bag. What can you say? It's all good. One of the uh, very many neat features of the driven bag 
is that it actually has uh, these armholes, these zip up armholes, but of course when you're using it to wrap your sleeping bag as a pod, then this makes a very, very good face hole, which uh, prevents too much uh, condensation from happening. So that was pretty good last night because it's, uh, yeah, you get kind of warm in there. Of course, you see how well the camo works with this environment. One thing just to note with this uh, setup, and yeah, it really is uh, kind of steep ground here. One thing to note with this uh, setup is that the tarp, of course, is not uh, very elastic. So you need to rig up a system where the tarp is loose when you get in. And then from inside the uh, hammock here, you need to be able to pull that tarp up. And the best bet there is just to put a little prussic loop on a, uh, on a ridge line here. And then you'll see that the tarp covers the, uh, the hammock for wind protection, which last night was rather necessary. So there you have the whole setup. If you are worried about precipitation, then of course you could uh, put another tarp over the top, or you could maybe even uh, set it up so that it was uh, the other way around, but I really just wanted the wind to be off my back. And so that's how it was all set up. Always hanging up all my gear and checking always for any loose branches up there. Especially when you know it's going to be windy, always check the weather forecast just before you go out. And so you can see that even on quite steep ground, you can have a cozy setup. Oh, yes, hot water bottle. Always a good thing. Yeah, so beautiful morning. Had some coffee. Time to get on with it, I think. Yeah, do yourself a favor when you're tying things up overnight, uh, including actually the hammock. You really don't want to mess about with a lot of difficult knots. This is just a loop back and forth. It's just vastly, vastly easier to undo in the morning. There you go. You'll be thanking your ingenuity in the morning because it's a new sense to untie knots with cold hands. Now why does she have a plastic bag on her foot? Well, that is because Sometimes, when you are hiking a long time during the day, your boots get a bit damp and your socks definitely get damp. So, at night, I have nice, clean, warm socks. And if I want to keep them dry, then I put a plastic bag on them so that the dampness of the boot doesn't make my nice, warm, sleeping socks get wet. Hey. That is a trick that we learned in the Caramore International Mountain Marathon. Thank you very much, Mike Parsons, because that's a rocking, rocking tip. Warm socks all the way. Oh, hey, and any of you that are going to get any of these hard leather mountaineering boots, you know, a la Sportiva, just go out for a couple of hours before you go on the big tour with these things because they walk quite differently. It's quite a different experience and it can be quite tiring until you get the hang of it. And uh, the big tour is not a great place to find out about that. So go walking in them and you'll soon uh, see what I mean. Oh, 
Well, it's hardly ice axe and crampon territory, but you wouldn't really want to mess it up. This snow here is like granulated sugar. Very old, rounded snow here. It really is like granulated sugar. Amazing, wet granulated sugar. <laughs> yeah. Nice to be out in the snow. All sorts of snow are good. Back down in some bit more moderate forest now. Main difficulties basically behind us. Very nice. Okay. 